Hello and welcome to your uh, major project for uh, Microsoft Excel for week two here. And what we're going to do is develop a grade book for grades uh, as you see here on the screen. So the requirements for this assignment is you'll need to have uh, at least 10 names and you'll need to have at least 10 assignments. So A1 is assignment one, A2 is assignment two through A10. And you'll need to fill in some grades. The grades here do not matter. So uh, fill in the grades and, and get to this point right here. So let me go over a couple of things with you um, in, in Microsoft Excel. If I click on A here, what I've done is I've clicked on the column, and this is column A. I can click on here, column B. And yet likewise, you can see here is row one, row two, and row three. And when you have a designator for a column, let's say uh, F, column F7, you'll see that right here, uh, for example, if I click on G7, it'll tell me that I'm in there. So it always goes column first and then the row second. So if I click here, it's going to show me J8. So you'll need to remember that. All right, so uh, let's take a look at what we're looking at here. And, and you can see the first name, last name, assignment one. First name is in what we call a cell. And this is on your discussion question. So this is a cell. First name, last name, and then you can see here are all the grades for the student. So you can see that a row two here is equivalent to what we would call in Microsoft Access a record. So this is a record for Mr. Myers, and it shows all of his grades. Okay, so just to do some simple uh, editing here, you know, we might come in and, and do a mouse over on A, B. And if I bring this over, you can see that A gets bigger. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to have A, B be the same size. So if I highlight both and then grab A, B and bring it back into uh, where I think it looks good, you'll see that it will resize both columns the same. So likewise, I'd like to have D through L be the same size. So I'm going to come in and make these a little bit smaller to save space. And I'll make them just a little bit bigger. All right. And likewise, I'm going to do a center justify. I'm going to select row one, and I'm going to hit bold. So you can see our, our uh, spreadsheet here is starting to take uh, on some, uh, some nice looking uh, forms here. So I'm also going to introduce you to working with formulas. So simple editing, you know, like typing in and doing bold, that's all kind of simple stuff. But you do need to be familiar with a couple things, and, and that is knowing what a cell is, what a row, what a column, how to uh, resize and manipulate, things like that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a total column. And I'm going to uh, click on the uh, record for Larry. And I'm going to come up here and click on the auto sum button. And if I click on auto sum and hit enter, it's going to tell me that Larry has a total of 816 points. So I'm going to click here, do a center justification. Now what I want to do is, in creating this formula here, I want to create that formula for everyone else, but I don't have to type that in for everyone. If I click here on the 816, I'm going to come here to this little square on the screen, drag and drop all the way down, and you'll notice it'll auto sum all of this total. So it does this because it's called a, um, a relative value. So what it does is stays relative to the row that it's in. So again, if I click here, you'll see that it says CL3. This will say CL4, row 4, row 5, 6, and so forth. So it's relative. Meaning that it'll, when you copy the formula to another cell, it'll take on the information from that row. So that's what we mean by relative. The other um, word that you had in your discussions was absolute. So absolute is where we might put in here a number. Uh, for example, I could say C6 through L6 and, um, you know, say and multiply it by a, a number and give it a number versus a cell. And that would be an absolute value and that number will never change no matter how many times you, or wherever you copy and paste the formula to. So anyway, this is a good start to our spreadsheet here. The last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to show my grade. Okay, so let's put in your grade. And what I want to do now is I want to build a formula. And uh, just so you know, this function button here will bring up the uh, 
information to build a formula, but let's let's learn how to do these manually. So first thing I'm going to do here is uh, click off, click back on it, and I'm going to type in equals sum. That's the how you begin starting any formula in Microsoft Excel. Now when I want to tell it what to do, I need to put it in parentheses. So just like in regular math, uh, we always work inside and then work out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 816. All right. I don't want to type in 816 because that would be an absolute value. I want to use the relative value of it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to click uh, or type in M2. And now what I want to do is I want to divide this by the total possible points. Well, if I have 10 grades, and you can see here these are all worth 100 points, then I would assume that out, this is going to be out of 1,000 points. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter here just to show you what we get. And again, let me center that up. And 81.6, or I'm sorry, 816 is what you see here. And I want that to be 81.6%. So again, I, I'm not through with my formula, so I'm going to click on it, come up to here, and I'm going to multiply that by 100. And what that'll do is it'll change your grade to an 81.6%. Likewise, I can right click on this cell. And a, a, a very good tool to use is the format cells. And learn that you can always right click on these things to bring up your toolbar. I'm going to do a format cell because I want it to be a percentage. And we'll have it show like so. And now what I may do is I may need to come back and take off my times 100 because when you change it to a percentage formula or a, a type of cell, it's going to automatically do the multiplying by 100. And it also, uh, by being a percentage, will also put in that percent symbol. So now what I can do is I can just drag and drop this down. And because it's relatively thinking, it's going to take on the grade. So 816 here is 81.6. Here is 81.6. So we know that that's right. And um, here, this person, uh, we have 778 points. So there's no way a student can have 156% out of 100. So this is obviously wrong. So let's change that to a 78. Change that to an 86. Change this to a 92. And now you can see all our grades are looking, looking pretty good. All right, so for this assignment, we just want to have uh, some simple information up here, do some uh, simple functions, and some changing our uh, format cells and changing the, uh, the, the number type to percentage. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to work with a pivotal table. And pivotal tables will work really nice because you can see here that we have an 81 and 80, an 86, an 81 and 80, and 87. These are not in any certain order. So what I'm going to do is uh, click and hold here, come up to the top. And I'm going to insert a table. And actually, all you have to do is hit enter because your table does have headers. So we're just going to say OK. So now what I can do is based on the grade. I can say largest to smallest. Now all my grades, and you can see Mr. Getty here did really well in the class, and Susie uh, got a B. So everyone here uh, got a B in this class. And uh, let's change these around a little bit. What I'd like to do is maybe just a 90. Let's make that a 95. And make that 60 and 85. And let's take that 74 and make it an 80. Five. All right, so now we have one student that has an A, uh, student has a uh, B, and let's make this a 55, let's make that a 56, let's make this, um, oh, let's make it 88. All right, and now we'll 88, let's make it 85. How about a 75? Okay, so we have a student here that has an A, we have a student that has a B, we have a student that has a C. So let's make this grade here zero and zero. Now we have a student that has a D. And let's do a zero here. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna make these next four grades zero. So I'm just gonna click and hold on the bottom corner here, drag that across, and you can now see that that student has a 41.6. So we have at least one student has an A, one student has a B, C, and D. And this is what you'll need to do for your uh, assignment here, because now what we're going to do is work on conditional formatting.
conditional formatting is going to allow me to say, okay, if the student has a 93, which is an A, I want the grade to show up as green. So it's a positive field. So let's just click here, and we're going to go home, and I'm going to click on conditional formatting. Conditional formatting highlights cells, rules, and between. So what we're going to say here is anyone that has a 90 90, and let's do a shift here, percent and 100%. We want the color to turn green and bold and say okay. All right. Now, the trick to this is, is we are going to need to apply conditional formatting to just this one cell. All right. So, for example, we're going to click here again, go back to conditional formatting. Highlight cell rules, go to between, and now we want to say, is anyone here that scores, uh, let's do an escape, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules between, so anyone that scores between a 80 to 89, we want this uh, text to turn to a blue and bold and say okay. Okay, so now we have another conditional formatting set for uh, this grade. So if it changes below this, it'll change colors. It'll automatically let us know uh, that the student is having trouble or you know, their grades are going down. So I need to apply a C level grade. So we've got a conditional formatting. Highlight rules between. So only one that has a 70 79. We want this color to turn to an orange. Okay. Now, likewise, we're going to do conditional formatting, highlight cells, do it between. And anyone here that has a 60 to a 69, we want this to turn to a custom color. Of red. Now, the last conditional formatting is going to be uh, unique in that when we say highlight cells rules between, we're going to say between zero and 59%. Here, we're going to have light red fill with dark red text. That'll let us know uh, who we're filling the class. What we'll do is just say, now you can see here I applied conditional formatting to just one cell. So in order to get that to duplicate, I'm going to click and hold, and basically I'm now copying the formula and the conditional formatting down the screen. So when I click off of it here, you can see now I have someone here with a C, a D, and an F. All right. Now what I'm going to do is take this 96, and I'm going to copy it all the way across, and I want you to see what happens in... Um, Row 10, you can see it now takes you to 92. So the conditional formatting will change as the information changes. Okay, so this is a good start uh, to get you going. So you want to go ahead and build your table and get all of your information in. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Okay. Let's see So let's get, uh, let's get this far, and then the rest of the exercise will be available to you in the next video, which I will post uh, probably tomorrow. So, all right. If you have any questions, email me or uh, send me a discussion in the uh, discussion board or uh, message me in Blackboard, and I will get back with you. Thank you.